Hello and welcome back to the Basie YouTube channel. Happy New Year. I hope you had a great Christmas and a good recovery period. Uh, got to spend time with your family and I'm certainly, I certainly managed to do that myself. And we're back again with another episode of Startcast. But before that, I just want to talk about this year, I'm planning to do more podcasts, uh, more trips to visit businesses and deliver more content to you guys uh, and experiment with my content and see what works best for this channel. Um, but I hope you enjoy everything that I'm going to be putting out. Uh, leave your feedback below throughout the year. Uh, uh, that's how I build this channel and will make the content better for yourselves. But let's stop talking about everything else and jump straight into Startcast. Let's talk about today's episode of Startcast. We've got three main stories as per usual. The first is gonna be in the advertising tech space. Uh, the next is an augmented reality uh, focused business. And the last one is going to be a food tech business, followed by the startup showcase, the smaller business that I like to highlight on this show. Uh, and it's a mental health startup that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys. And I think it's a really great idea. So stay tuned towards the end of the video to see that, but let's jump straight in with the first story. So our first story today is going to be surrounding a business called Vengo Labs and Vengo Labs create modern uh, vending machines that double up as an advertising product thanks to it having a 21 and a half inch touchscreen display. Businesses can use these vending machines to sell regular items like food and drink but also things like phone accessories, phone chargers or headphones and things like that that you can sell within a vending machine which is a lot more compact than traditional vending machines. Or perhaps businesses could, because since it doubles up as an advertising product, can use it as a viral marketing campaign. With contactless car payments, cloud-based inventory management, and the ability to track nearby foot traffic, uh, it's no surprise that this data harvesting ad tech uh, vending machine company is attracting attention from a lot of investors. Now in 2016, Vengo Labs actually raised $2 million in venture debt capital on the US hit show uh, Shark Tank from Kevin O'Leary and Laurie Grainer. More recently, Vengo Labs has just raised $7 million in a series B round of funding uh, from multiple significant investors, including entrepreneur and social media superstar Gary Vaynerchuk and also hip hop rapper Nas. Co-founder Brian Shimelik actually said that the money that will be has been raised in this round is going towards developing into new markets beyond their New York base at the moment, and also tackling new products in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Now for our second story, we're gonna rewind back to December where San Francisco-based augmented reality company Niantic, the developers behind the, mo the mobile hit Pokemon Go, have just raised $190 million in a Series C funding round. The funding primarily came from Samsung, Axiomatic, and other VCs uh, as the lead investors. This round closed just in the run-up to 2019, uh, prior to the release of Niantic's new Harry Potter-focused augmented reality game uh, called Wizards Unite, after securing the intellectual property to be able to use the Harry Potter branding. We can kind of piece together that the money raised from this round will likely go toward pushing the game's launch and increasing sales and in-app purchases similar that we've seen with Pokemon Go. Now in order to get a feel of how successful uh, Wizards Unite will be, we can take a look back at Pokemon Go and an article released by Sensor Tower in July of 2018 actually showed that Pokemon Go at one stage was making $2 million a day from Pokemon Go fans. They also estimated that Niantic had reached $1.8 billion in sales and revenue for Pokemon Go since the game's release thanks to its in-app purchase model. We'll have to wait until the new game's released to see the success of Wizards Unite and if it can match up to Pokemon Go's uh, already massive success. Now, moving on to our third story, we're gonna be talking about the UK-based food tech company, Gusto. Gusto is an online meal kit manufacturer and retailer that uses AI to create recipes based on the user's preference. The UK company started in 2012 and now offers a product to deliver ingredients straight to your door based on recipes of your choosing on the website and then you can use these ingredients uh, to prepare meals at an affordable price. Now recently Gusto have just completed an £80 million funding round uh, from existing investors such as Unilever Ventures and also the health food influencer who has a huge social media following on Instagram and YouTube, uh, Joe Wicks. Now in the TechCrunch article that I've linked below, they reached out to the CEO of Gusto, uh, Timo Bolt, and they asked him about the sort of scale and the growth of the company. And he said that at the moment, they're selling around 1.5 million meals per month uh, with also not, no specific figures, but year on year uh, increasing growth. Now the food delivery platform actually uh, says on its website that it can offer a meal from as low as £2.98 
per meal. Obviously, you have to buy a certain amount, so a box might cost, let's say, uh, £30. Um, but the idea behind this is that they give you the correctly apportioned size of food that you need in your diet, uh, leading to a reduced wastage and also healthier eating, uh, thanks to uh, for Gusto to apportion these size appropriately for you. From a business perspective, this is a great idea for Gusto because they can benefit from the economies of scale that their growing customer base has, uh, such the likes of a supermarket can, but also without the insane amount of wastage that a supermarket generates with all its perishable foods, because they're delivering food that only you need and you cannot waste because all the ingredients are included in the box, uh, which you'll use all at once. Now, if you want to check out the links and the references to any of the stories that I've talked about today, I leave all my links in the description below. So all the three main stories, plus the story I'm going to cover now, um, they'll, all the information you need is in the description below. Okay, so we're moving on from the main stories today. We're moving on to my favorite section of the show, the startup highlight or the startup showcase of part, uh, portion of the show. And today we're talking about a mental health startup that's based in New York. Now, I came across this idea when I was looking on Product Hunt, and it's an idea called Maisie. And Maisie is a mental health startup that is aiming to break down the financial barriers of accessing high quality uh, counselling from trained professionals. Now, Maisie argues that traditional therapy from professional therapists can range from anywhere between $100 to $300 based on their expertise uh, per hour. Um, and they believe that they can cut their co this cost down by doing group therapy sessions, lowering to the cost to about $20 to $40 per hour. Now, Maisie have created these groups and called them circles. And what circles are, are a group of people that have submitted their information on the Maisie platform. Uh, this is just some basic personal information about what they want the count, want they want to get out of the counseling and a bit of the history about themselves. Now, Maisie has trained mental health experts and therapists that will re review the information and try and pair people up into appropriate groups so that they can go to group counseling uh, and get the most out of it. Now, the service also offers a chat room. So outside of counseling time, you can talk specifically within your circle. So the members that you physically interacted with in a, a physical group uh, therapy session, and you can talk about your progress outside of the sessions. And I think this is a good way to create a close community that uh, people can feel they can talk to and be honest with outside of the group as well. Now, at the moment, Maisie is only running in New York, and on the surface, it is a very early stage startup. And I think this has a potential to be expandable into other cities and towns and e even countries. Um, but what I think it will depend on is the balance between the level of in-depth uh, therapy towards an individual and also the cost savings. So you have to make sure that these balance so people aren't going onto group sessions uh, paying less but also getting less out of it. So I'm sure with testing and working with smaller groups to work out what, what size works best, what type of people, uh, which trained professionals, the screening, all of this is going to be going through their experimentation and hopefully that they can build something that really makes a difference in communities and people can have easier access to therapy uh, to, help, uh, to help their mental health. Okay, thank you so much for watching today. I've really enjoyed making this episode. I can't wait for the rest of the year. I'm going to be doing StarCast episodes hopefully once a week. Uh, so if you have any uh, topics or stories that you want me to cover, definitely send me a message on my LinkedIn or leave a comment below in the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, reach out to some people who have their own startups to get them on the show, uh, like I had last on the last episode with Pink. Um, so that's going to be it for today. Check all the links in the description for my other social media and also the links to the stories that I've talked about about today. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you on the next episode.